Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar with uh, my dear friend from Italy, Dr. Armando Mincarelli. Hi, doctor. How are you? I'm but fine. Uh, before I start introducing him, let me speak about some initiatives we are taking at the Global Summits. The Universal School of Health is a new reality, and as first initiative, we are starting the Doctorate of Healthcare Business Program, DHB. I'm proud to introduce the first program uh, in the world that closes the gap between clinical training and real life business acumen for doctors, empowering us uh, to be successful CEOs and community leaders. As healthcare professionals, we all go through rigorous training, achieving clinical competency over years of professional education. But however, it is not possible to fit the business training into our already demanding clinical curriculum. So recognizing this gap, uh, we are offering this program to help doctors rise to their next level of business excellence. Our program is taught by clinical professionals who also own and run successful businesses, including myself. These doctors uh, come from all over the world and uh, have backgrounds in research publishing, innovation, team building, sales, psychology, uh, business scaling, and marketing. This unique team will be augmented by outstanding global industry leaders as guest lecturers, who will share cut-edging uh, knowledge in their respective fields. For several weeks, we are now, uh, and you were also now, able to hear the podinars from many of the main lecturers of DHB, and we will continue to do so for the next month also. If interested, please contact us as soon as possible to profit from preferential fees. And we will also offer several scholarships. Also, another point that I wanted you to let you know is the Hippocratic accreditation, uh, which is uh, accreditation by doctors uh, for the healthcare industry without the corruption. In the last few decades, third-party service and product uh, organizations have grown around uh, accreditation organizations, professional schools, finances, politicians, lobbyists, uh, regulatory bodies, and whoever can exert their influence directly or indirectly interfering with the sacred patient-doctor relationship. The noble professions have become more in a marketing function and the public has lost faith uh, in its professionals and the healthcare industry. So this trust must be restored. Hippocratic principles are the premise of our oath and obligation to patients and the healthcare industry. First, do no harm. Though leaders, namely doctors, uh, should continue to guide the destiny of the noblest profession, as we have done for thousands of years. As we enter a world of globalization and integration in healthcare, domestic accreditation bodies do not have any uh, significant oversight, which has led to corruption and to invited corporization of the healthcare industry. For the benefit of a few, monetary gain has become the greatest priority for those and no fraternity, regardless of taints and, and scientific method and the sacrifice of healthcare professionals to end their patients. To reestablish this, the Global Summits Institute, composed exclusively of leading doctors, dentists, pharmacists, optometrists, chiropractors, and healthcare philosophers, as nominated by their peers, will be offering Hippoc Hippocratic accreditation to any of the organization deemed worthy of this seal of approval including universities, insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies, service providers, regulatory agencies, product distributors, hospitals, private practices, domestic or international, operating within the healthcare supply chain. This mark is earned by the organization and will inform doctors and patients worldwide that the organization has undergone a thoroughly review process and does not infringe upon their inherent rights and relationship. So uh, I'm glad now to introduce Dr. Armando Francesco Mincarelli. Me, Dr. Mincarelli is an Italian oral surgeon and expert in dental 
prosthesis and oral oncology. He has graduated from the University of Bari and he mainly deals with multidisciplinary complex surgery implant treatments. He is an expert in impacted uh, teeth surgery and all oral surgery. Uh, he is a speaker in numerous courses and conferences in Italy and abroad for these issues. He works in his clinic uh, in Bari, Southern Italy, and he is also a scientific consultant for clinical research. But uh, what is more to know is that Dr. Mincarelli is uh, married to an Albanian woman and since he is so, I know him from many years and we had the pleasure to, to meet, uh, you know, in uh, different conferences in Albania and in Italy. So, Dr. Mincerelli, how are you today? Thanks, I am very, very well. <laughs> it's possible to start now. The, yes, uh, of course it is. So your topic is uh, very interesting. Uh, can you please tell us a couple of words what are you going to talk about? I talk about with a, a sinusive treatment, technique and procedure. Okay. okay. So uh, please share the screen with us and uh, good luck for this event. Okay, thank you. Hello, Andividi. It's okay. 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 Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. I am very honored uh, to have been invited to speak for the Global Summit Academy of Oral Surgery and top 100 doctor in the world. Thanks to Dr. Kionor Shah and my friend, Dr. Guliem de Miraci, for giving me the possibility to be here in front of you. Today's topic will focus on sinus lift technique and procedure, but first I would like to officially introduce myself to the scientific community. My daily practice consists of the management and implementation of complex multidisciplinary prosthesis, oral surgery, implant prosthetic restoration, and oral oncology. There are many techniques related to sinus lift and it is important that the clinician is able to select the right technique for each individual case. My belief if should be used by the clinician when the possibility of using alternative technique are scarce. To begin talking about the technique and procedure for the large maxillary sinus lift, it seems right for me to speak about the anatomy of the sinus. The right understanding of anatomy ultimately leads to excellent surgical technique. These are focused on achieving correct prosthetic procedure with complete and effective management of any complication. Sinus pathologies are usually considered to be maxillofacial surgery are often related to, be, to the stomatognatic system with the anatomical relationship of contiguity. The jaw sinus or cavern of Higmore is the largest paranasal cavity and is contained in the body of the maxilla. Its development is related to a process of functional pneumatization of the bone partial block during the growth of the school in the postnatal period. This then slow down in the period of puberty until the five, six year of life and then resumes in old age. This is when the maxillary sinus reaches maximum volume about 30 cc. It's very variable in shape and size, from aplasia to hyperneumatization. The average volume is allotted is about 20 cc. The maxillary sinuses are frequently asymmetric. Anatomical variability is from three cubic centimeter to 35 cubic centimeter. It is a shape quadrangular pyramid with the apex direct lateral 
uh, the zygomatic bone. The frontal area or surgical area, this extends from the lower edge of the orbit to the upper alveolar process. The upper wall constitutes the floor of the orbit where the infra ne uh, orbital nerve runs. The lower wall corresponds to alveolar process and the medial wall separates the antrum from the nasal coana. Indication, from a clinical perspective, the maxillary sinus elevation finds its ideal indication when it is impossible to insert <clears throat> Clinal and or short implants in the anterior posterior maxilla due to excessive bone resorption and the presence of large sinus cavity without doors or bony set and then there is a residual bone base at less two to three millimeter the space between the edentulous crest and the antagonist lower arch is at least five millimeter and no bigger than 12 millimeter, and absence of antral pathologies, exudate cysty neopolypos formation. The contraindications are general contraindication to implant surgery. The presence of large residual space between the dentulous saddle and antagonist arch, adverse relationship between root and crown, a residual bone base of less than one millimeter, the presence of bone septa in the sinus cavities, or need to call and maxillofacial surgery. This reclassification made by Professor Simeon helps us plan out the most appropriate treatment plan. There is two parameters: the distance from the bone crest the amylosemum joint CAJ for the adjacent teeth and the height of the alveolar bone. Class A, the bone crest is located about three millimeter from the CAJ of the adjacent teeth. The eye of the alveolar bone is at least six to seven millimeter when the distance between the arch is normal. Treatment plane, the implant can be inserted following standard protocol or a discretion of the clinician with the technique of mini sinus lift, the crestal way using osteotomies. Regenerative procedures with GBR are not necessary. Class B, the bone crest is located about three millimeters from the CAJ of the adjacent teeth. The height of the alveolar bone is less than six to seven millimeter, and the pneumatization of the maxillary sinus increases. And the distance between the arch is normal. The treatment plane, the implant can only be inserted following the standard protocol or a discretion of the clinician using the technique of a mini sinus lift. The crest away using osteotomus, regenerative procedure with GBR are not necessary. Class C, the bone crest is located more than three millimeter from the CAJ of the adjacent teeth. The high of the alveolar bone is at least six to seven millimeter as the distance between the arch increases. Sometimes you need more than a vertical increases technique, and we also require an increase of thickness with GBR. Class D, the bone crest is located 
more than three millimeter from the CAJ of the adjacent teeth. The eye of the alveolar bone is less than six to seven millimeter, increasing the pneumatization of the maxillary sinus at the interax distance. Treatment plane, the increasing pneumatization of the maxillary sinus and the simultaneous accentuated vertical resorption of the bone crest must be management, managed by combining the large maxillary sinus elevation with the regenerative procedure of the vertical ridge elevation with GBR. Anatomical factor to consider, the maxillary sinuses are lined with a respiratory mucosa or scholar Schneider membrana. The average thickness of the sinus mucosa varies from 0.1 millimeter to 0.5 millimeter. In the 13% of cases, there are bona septa, the underwood septa, lateral media, always originates from the base of the breast and our corticalized bone. The average height is eight millimeter with peaks higher than 50 millimeter. The osseous protuberance inside the nasal sinuses sinus, is very difficult to find. But if it is found, it, the surgery becomes very complicated. the medial, there are two communication cavities between the nose and the maxillary sinus, the lower meatus, antero inferior, and the middle meatus or hiatus semilunaris. In 10% of cases, there are additional nasal communication offer. To prevent possible perforation of the sinus membrana, it is important to consider the angle between the vestibular wall and the medial wall to the maxillary sinus at the level of the planet osteotomy. At less than 30 degree, wait, sorry. At less than 30 degree perforation is about 60% compared to between 30 to 60 degree, which leaves the perforation to 40%. The vascularization, it is anatomical area. In this anatomical area, it's mainly given by an arterial deriving from the posterior superior maxillary arte artery. And, uh, in the uh, end is uh, uh, arterio alveolo, alveolo uh, artery, uh, antral artery. This arterio has a high anatomical variability both in diameter and position. Tooth extraction can lead either to, to vertical bone resorption toward the maxillary leaving the maxillary sinus volume intact, or in the opposite direction, with an increase in sinus volume to bring the sinus floor closer to the edge of the alveolar ridge. Tourist in the 65 was the first person to discover that free cell implanted on the calcified bone in exoskeletal sites simulated the formation of new bone. The responsible biological molecular belong the growth factor B and are called morphogenetic bone proteins, BMPS. Since then, the materials have evolved greatly. The main substitute now are autogenic bone is considered the best filling harbor or gold standard. Sino index, bone from different spices or alloplastic bone, complex synthetic origin. Some authors have proposed breast augmentation without the use of a grafting material 
in the sinus. The coagulate blood acts as scaffold for bone formation. The apex of the implants can be used to support the sinus membrana. Bone regeneration occurs as a result of this procedure, although the real clinical benefit remain in doubt signs this method has not been adequately assessed through proper control procedure. Alternative technique to sinus lift. There are several therapeutic options as an alternative to the large sinus lift. This range from only grafts of vertical and horizontal bone augmentation, short implants, and inclined or zygomatic implants. The implants can also be placed in an angle direction to avoid the maxillary sinus. These implants are called inclined or angled and can only be used when the anatomical condition permit. The current research focuses on the evaluation of short implant position without bone augmentation, offering the opportunity for a less complex, less expensive and faster alternative to the large maxillary sinus lift. There are a few comparative studies evaluation the effectiveness of short implants. Now, Renoir 2006, the final implant with lengths from five to eight short, while well, Das Neves 2006 from seven to ten millimeters. Now, consider short implants five to nine millimeters long. In this article, with uh, can and Marco Esposito to evaluate the effectiveness of long implants 10 to 16 millimeters inserted in maxillary sinus sinuses augmented by means of the lateral windows approach or short implants 8 millimeter positioned in sinuses augmented by a crystal approach loaded crystal approach loaded healing after 45 days. The conclusion of this article is short eight implant, short eight uh, millimeter implants together with the crystal sinus lift may be preferable to sinus elevation with the lateral windows technique. It's simultaneous placement of longer implants in atrophic maxillary sinuses with a residual bone higher of three to six millimeters, as they seem to be associated with the less mobility. If these implants are positioned with an insertion torque more 35 Newton centimeter and connect under the same processes, they can be loaded after six, six weeks. Technique of the large sinus lift. The surgical technique for the large maxillary sinus elevation for the insertion of the ostentated implants was first reported in literature by Bone and James in 1980 and then modified. It is adopted for the recovery of a sufficient high of residual velar bone in the reconstruction of several atrophic maxilla. In the 1986 described five types of incision to perform the operation described by bone, crystal, palatal, half palatal thickness, vertical and horizontal vestibular, and three types of bone surgical assets, crystal, buccal, and the fourth one. Tatum also described the one stage and the two stage sinus lift technique. The large sinus lift technique is considered a reliable technique and with predictable result if autologous bone is used as a bone filler. Lateral approach. One stage, diagnostic phase, a mouth of residual bone is in two. Is one stage and two stage. One stage, 
alongside the maxillary sinus lift technique with or without the GBR, insertion of integrated implants in a single phase. Surgical and contextual approach more three millimeter thickness. Contextual surgical approach. Two stage maxillary sinus lift technique, waiting six to nine months and then insertion for OST integrated implants. So surgical and deferred approach, less three millimeter thickness. Delayed surgical approach. In the pre-surgical protocol with patients <clears throat> are at risk, you should always give antibiotic therapy three to four days before intervention and continue for another three to four uh, after the intervention. For healthy patients and in simple cases, it is possible to give short therapy, which consists of two grams of amoxicillin and clavulanic acid one hour before the intervention and one gram eight hour after the intervention. And Nasonex to sniff per nostril two times a day for three days before the surgery. Sinus lift technique, full thickness detachment, vestibular antrostomy, rotation instrument or piezosurgery, detachment of the Schneiderian membrana, extension of detachment of the medial GBR with bone or substitute membrana and sutura. Vestibular antrostomy, the Inferior margin of the antrostomy must be approximately three millimeter from the bottom of the maxillary sinus base. The upper margin seven to ten millimeter from the lower margin surgical area. With the second, please. Sorry. Surgical chest form, rectangular oval anatomic. It is a surgeon decision to choose how to perform the surgical access. Normally, if the surgeon is less experienced, there is the need for greater antrostomy. The initial detachment of the membrana must take place at the apical level to reduce the tension of the membrana. Sequentially, mesial, distal, and finally, the base of the sinus. The instrument must always be used seeking intimate bone contact. The mucosa has to be peeled of the medial wall of the nose. Why it is important to see the wall of the maxillary sinus? Because of increase in exposed wall and growth of osteogenetic potential. Consequentially, this helps the healing process, improve graft stability by avoiding re-pneumatization phenomena. It allows correct implant positioning uh, it maintains a physiological drainage of the maxillary sinus. It is the best step case reporter approach. Radiography preoperatory, detachment, antrostomy plane piezosurgery, removal of the bone fragment and or overtuning and or bone recovery. Need to reach the medial wall. Filling with a space maintainer, autologous, homologous, heterologous, or clot bone, possibility of covering with membrana and sutura. 
radiography a pre and post operation. Now let's uh, look at the crystal technique. Summer in the nineteen ninety four described non invasive one stage technique to elevate the maxillary sinus membrane and simultaneous insertion for the implants, minimum six millimeter, through the use of osteotomus. Concave osteotomus increase help to raise the sinus membrana to prepare the implant site. The technique is performed in conjunction with grafting material. In the 2000, Koshi described a crystal approach technique using atraumatic cutters that reduce the risk of sinus membrana and lowers the crystal bone limit from six millimeter to three millimeter with one stage technique. The cast kit is, it is a crystal approach technique with use of automatic drill that reduce the risk of perforation of the sinus membrana and lowers the bone limit up to two millimeter with the two stage technique. This is a kit. Uh, this one is split one into surgical section, prosthetic section, and another section. Clinical case. Okay. Uh, in this image, we see the pre-surgical CT section. Okay. And bef uh, image before orthodontics and af after orthodontics intervention. The residual bone is about two millimeter and I am to recover. I and I am to recover uh, at least 10 millimeter of bone. The step one, incision and detachment. Step two, first drill and then drill for diameter. Step three, identify the sinus membrana. After hydraulic lifting phase, step four, very slowly in, in, uh, inject one 1.5 cc of, of physiologic solution. Identify the sinus membrana, hydraulic lifting, and lift the membrana and fill the space with synthetic bone. This procedure is very comfortable treatment for drills and do stops for one CC physiologic solution. Before and after. This case is a case for this video. Okay. Starting we start by holding the flap open with an external uh, suture by doing so we improve the view in intervention. The first cutter we use as a two millimeter diameter to two millimeter high. Okay. Is this perfect? Immediately afterward, you go up by one millimeter and use the drill with a height of three millimeter and a diameter 
When the sinus membrana has been identified, idiopneumatics are used to lift the membrana. And when the membrana has been lifted, it is filed with synthetic bone, resolve membrana, and the finally sutura. It's very comfortable treatment. Okay, now let's quickly look at the last case. The last case. Here we can easily assess the limitation of the crystal technique compared to the lateral assess technique. In this case, residual bone higher, about two to three millimeter in this section. In this section, about five millimeter, but this is the uh, underwood septa. Identify bone in the surgical site. I correctly perform the technique described in the previous case, the first reel, second reel, the gauge, and lift with uh, hydropneumatic uh, elevation, the sinus membrana with physiological solution. Try the Valsalva maneuver to assess integrity of the membrana. The membrana is being lift, of course. It is filled with synthetic bone resorbable membrana and sutura. But it should be noted that the inserted graft material was deposited in the horizontal wall of the sinus cavity in this area. Decide to reopen because the bone volume that was reached was not sufficient for the, for the insertion of two implants. This measurement corresponds to the level of the bone reached after the first crystal sinus lift. With piezo-surgery technique, individual identification of the sinus membrana, removal of the bone duct, and this point is very difficult to detach this, the membrana, very sensitive area. In fact, during the detachment of the sinus membrana, there was a perforation which was promptly prepared with the collage membrane. You can see the membrane positioned to repair the perforation and insertion to fixture four to 10 millimeter long. Pre-operative radiography. And post-operative radiography. I think uh, about I, I I think I finish um, technique and lateral approach with uh, to summarize this is uh, how the technique to be uh, compared the lateral approach with crystal approach and the lateral approach employ experience. And the same in the crystal approach, but in the lateral approach, complex surgical learning curve. The crystal approach is a simple learning curve. In the, crest, in the lateral approach, minimum three sinus separate series and rotating and pies 
and or piezo surgery or implant and piece. Uh, in the crest approach, three, four, three to four drills and such a, a, a solution, physiological solution and implant and piece. In the lateral approach, several post-surgical. Uh, in the crest approach, middle post-surgical. The latter approach, of course, ability to manage an intraoperative co complication. In the crest approach, undetectable intraoperative complication. In the latter approach, it's very important limit, limit anatomical variation. In the crest approach, no limit, no anatomical limits. Post surgical protocol. Antibiotic therapy, it may help, be, it, uh, it may help to administer intramuscular cortisone in the interview area. Talking anti inflammatory and pain relief therapy as needed. Local disinfection with chlorhexidine non alcoholic solution to rinse the day after main meals. Local cryotherapy for about four hours. Abstinence for hot solid food for 24 for eight hours. Nasonex to sniff for each nostril for three days after surgery. And sleep with two pillows at night. Thanks to all of you for being present. Gurian, I'm finished my presentation. Thank you very much. So, please uh, close the, the screen. Uh, it was a very nice presentation. And for what I see, your approach, uh, your favorite approach is the, uh, you know, the small sinus lift with, uh, with CAS, isn't it? Yes. So how many complications did you have with it? Uh, complications like uh, membrane perforation and uh, stuff like that. Yes, the, have... the, the, the few perforation, uh, the few complications is perforation of membrana and uh, um, sinus infection with, uh, with bacteria is very, very complicated. Um, okay. Uh, and stop. But uh, when you um, work in uh, correctly um, pursued procedure, uh, you limit uh, very uh, the, the complication. Thanks. Uh, so, and also, how how do you manage if you perforate? Okay, I manage the perforator with the membrana in collagen, or uh, when you have a, a very good uh, hand, uh, surgical hand, uh, it's possible to suture the membrana, uh, or I prefer don't uh, perforation membrana, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> That is, of course, what we all would, uh, would prefer. But uh, so if, if it's a big perforation, some clinicians, you know, they uh, leave it like this and try to, to you know, reno reopen in three months or so. Is yes. it uh, what you would uh, recommend or you always try to, to feel it? No, I recommend it uh, close and reopen after, six, after four months or six months, of course. When I have a very big perforation, uh, it's not possible to repair uh, uh, its problem. And I close and reopen, of course. Of course, I would agree because, you know, it's, it's uh, better to do. Mm. And the second time, the, the membrane is also uh, a little much, uh, you know, much thicker and uh, more manageable after the, you, you do it in reopening in three or four or six months. Yes, yes. Uh, Ma, you think uh, when you um, um, uh, stay in, in operation and uh, you, uh, I, you, you, 
um, try the membrana, very sensitive, very whole, um, to help us uh, with uh, the Nasonex uh, cortisone and uh, therapy for um, uh, lower the in inflammatory um, mucosa. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. It was very nice to have you here today. And uh, nice evening because it's, it's evening in, in Albania and Italy now. And uh, I hope everybody was uh, very, you know, have learned something from this experience. And if there are other questions, perhaps you can uh, answer in the comments later. So thanks again and bye and see you in the next webinar. Okay, thank you, bye. Bye. Thank you very much.